I still think that we should bring people in to try to like get pros to try to do the support bash challenge. Oh my god, the pros will be able to do it. No, no, no. You see, the thing is, we get like a battle arena going on where like the pros get like whatever random ELO, and then we get like Baidoku and everybody on the other team, and the pros have to carry Bausch. There you go. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, I'm so happy I'm in your battle arena. Welcome, you are listening to Trinity Force Podcast, episode 21. Today is Tuesday, March 20th. Listen to this tomorrow, obviously be the 21st. Apparently this podcast is old enough to drink now, as we are <laughs> just a little bit in to our 20s. Yay. We're no longer a teenager. Yeah, maybe you should be cut off, though. Jesus. <laughs> I've only had two beer tonight. Actually, I've cut myself Jesus off quite Christ. a bit. Jesus Christ. Anyway, so I am here. <laughs> the first person you heard talk is Optimus Tom. Yep, that's me. I'm back again. You can't get rid of me. Well, I just kind of invite you because you're the only other person who matches our uh, our humor and <laughs> our deprecating and enthusiasm humor. And... Many people want your chair, I'll let you know. It's Oh my god, you have no idea how many people I've had message me this week. Go, oh my god, Randhurst's not on? Can I come on? You don't know how many people have been talking to me saying, hey, can you get me a spot on the podcast? I'm like, why, why ask me? I'm not part of it. I just keep getting asked to do it. But yes, you also forgot I'm the only one who matches your dashingly good looks. <laughs> yes, that, that climbing bar on your chest. That makes up for it all. <laughs> Listen, that just means that not only am I good looking, but I can provide food for a family. <laughs> Moving on. You know, you know who else can provide food for his family? The guy who can balance his checkbook. And of course, that's the math lander. The math yeah, lander. You plus me equals us. What's up, everyone? <laughs> <laughs> and uh, Hornet is here with us this week as well. What's going on? I, and I got to say, you know, there's nothing good looking about four pasty white guys. Sorry. It just doesn't work that way. Well, you should be pasty. You just came back from a week vacation. Don't you have a that's bit? true. I, I have some some lobster burn, but yeah, that's that's what happens in pasty white meets sun for too long. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I don't tan either. I just I just burn. So I just lobster bake. That's what we talk yeah. about. So. Yeah. Did you guys see me when I came back from my vacation? I had a little bit of pigment. My girlfriend was like tanner than I mean, she was black as hell, but uh, I came back looking pasty white still after sitting on the beach for five days. You're saying your girlfriend could have been in the hood? So what you're trying to say? I could. I'm saying that Auslander would have liked her at that point. <laughs> oh, <very nice>. <laughs> <laughs> good play. <laughs> <laughs> I can't recover from that one. So, guys, oh uh, man, How I want to know that since. <laughs> Since since we've had so many people that have loved to subscribe to us on YouTube, YouTube, um, have followed us on Twitter, have you know rated us on iTunes, I am going to do a giveaway this week, and I'm going to announce it right now. Uh, I'm going to be giving away a $10 RP card to anyone who follows us on Twitter. This will include the 100 followers that we already have. I'll randomly draw out of those. And if you start following from now until next Tuesday... Uh, Tuesday, 8 o'clock, that's the cutoff, uh, 8 o'clock uh, p.m. Eastern time. I will randomly draw and announce you next Tuesday live on T-Force Live as well that Wednesday when you listen to it the next day. So what do you guys think about a $10 giveaway? I think you're going to have a handful. I did one of these over Christmas time. I did three of them, and every single time I got new Twitter followers, it was a pain in my butt to count them all up and organize them. You know you can do something like justunfollow.com, and you can see all of your followers? You know I'm not that bright. <laughs> That I just gave away my secret weapon. But yeah, so follow follow us on Twitter. That's um, at T-Force Podcast on Twitter. And uh, we I tweet all day during it. I make annoying rant hurt jokes. I tweet at Tom. I tell people how much I love them and, you know, all the good stuff you would ever want to see from a podcast Twitter. Meanwhile, I don't tweet. And I would highly suggest that you try and grab this $10 RP card because, you know, the riot sales now suck and you need it just to get one champion. So. <laughs> just saying. Just because they've had, like, two weeks in a row of shitty sales does not mean they suck. Mm, yeah, we'll see. I, I have a feeling this is going to continue. Just just a hunch. Arctic Cannon. Continue where it's Arctic like Cannon 20. this week. That's that's a great sale. I was okay. going to buy it. Tom's I was going to buy it. I might buy it, and I have no intention of ever playing Cannon. <laughs> yeah. 
I'm not no gonna play. intention. I have kinda... huh? no, well, Oslander only plays crappy junglers and has XP quints, so. Yeah, that there's, was there's a right. lot. There's a lot wrong with him. That was a failed experiment. Tried my XP quint build with uh, who is it? Shivana and Shen, and uh, did not go well. I was not enough damage, and I really didn't out level anyone, so it was kind of pointless. You, you had the best bottom lane in the world, though. Lee Sin Talon. <laughs> I'm pretty sure. over everybody. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he had the best top lane in the world both games too. The Kale, who was when we were 11 and one, was the one. Yeah. <laughs> The one with the invulnerability skill that wound up dying because <laughs> four people came top because they didn't want to be uh, in the bottom lane anymore. <laughs> well, Tom and I had like possibly my favorite kill ever. I was hiding in the uh, the brush on top, and um, Tom just completely baited with Kale, and I can't remember who you're up. Oh, it was um, Fiora. Fiora just started unloading on him, and then oh, here's Shen out of the bush. <laughs> just blew her up. Is that the one where Tom's sitting there? Yep, I'm just a kale sitting here, not <laughs> doing anything. I was like, oh no, I pushed back to your tower, completely vulnerable here. Please do not gank me. There's definitely no one in this bush. Oh, you're dead. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. She went for it too. She ulted on me and everything. Yeah. It's just it's just that Shen matches Auslander so well. He just likes to taunt people as normal. So when he gets to taunting, yeah, that's 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 right up Auslander's alley. It just like makes sense. Makes total sense. That's awesome. Oh, man. I hope I really hope they make like an accountant skin for Shen pretty soon. Yeah, well, if they do, I'll buy it immediately. I'll buy it for all of you. That's a that's a promise. I mean, all of you on the podcast. I don't want to <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to start. All right. Yeah, I don't want to start $10 RP cards and Auslander's buying us all skin. Yeah, I'll the, the poor I'll guy, start. the poor guy at Seven Eleven. When I show up to do that, I'm like, uh, yeah, I need. Uh, no, I wish you played Doctor Mundo, just because that would make so much sense of corporate. Corporate Mundo. Yeah, yes. Man. So, this last weekend we had the GG Classic go on, which was a, as you saw in the bumper, if you watched the beginning of this, it was, it's a round of 32 for this first weekend. We got 32 invited teams, and we had a whole bunch of teams play. And I have the brackets up here. Who went on right now? We're still winning on CLG, who decided to, um, who actually decided to move to Korea a couple of weeks before. Who does that? <laughs> so they I still would. need to play their round of 32 against TB. I don't know who TB is. TBD? Is it TBD? It just says TB. Oh, that's a bad joke. To be determined. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, I kind of. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, we have Epic, uh, MTW, NA, which is Goose. We have Reflex, Team Fornaught, TSM, uh, Curse, V8, and Dig uh, Dignitas as well. Also, I'm really happy to see that DB Gaming made the second round, and I'm going to be going against Epic, because DB Gaming's like our local amateurs. They played in Battle Arena before, well, uh, Baidoku. He's the guy who we always play with, and you know they have a great, really great team. I'd really like to see them make it to the round of eight. That's not... They tell me they have... They tell, I'm sorry, they're telling me they have some uh, surprises up their sleeves to pull out against Epic. They know Epic's weak right now with a not-solidified lineup, and they really don't have as much practice. So they said they have a couple tricks up their sleeves. They don't think that Epic's going to be able to handle. Ooh, that's some big words. I really like Clayky D, though. We watched Clayky play uh, Lee Sin in the jungle. He did a fantastic job of it. and he I mean, he had some sweet uh, ganks and some sweet jukes. So that guy coming from the Street Fighter and Marvel could really turn it around the league. Yeah, his Hugo is awesome, too. If you've watched him play any Street Fighter across Tekken, <laughs> it's just badass. <laughs> any talents. Yep. I heard he got carried by Marn. That's not true. That is untrue. Wait, was he uh, partners with Marn? The yeah, they, they had that tournament last week. Once again, we're on uh, the wrong game. But uh, they had a tournament last <laughs> week. And uh, yeah, it was Marn and uh, Kaliki D. And they actually took out Justin Wong and Flo in the first. The first uh, They sent him to losers. But uh, I think Justin Wong and Flo ended up winning it all. So. And uh, nobody has any idea what the fuck you're talking about. So <laughs> let's go back on topic, please. I got to have Ace, guys. Can you guys hear that in the background of my mic? No, nothing. Oh, Good. Fapping? What? No, no, no. I'm down in the basement now. I think I've said it before, and I actually have the sub pump behind me, and it slowly fills full of water. And you know, when it fills full up, the sub pump turns on. So I want to make sure you guys couldn't hear like the dripping that's coming out of it. Because if you did, I was gonna have to go unplug it, and then hope the basement doesn't flood in the hour that we're doing this podcast. And fry your PC among everything else. Yeah. Oh yeah. God, yes. You yeah, know, if I get a flood down here, I'm screwed. Anyway, so yeah, the GG Classic, dude, we're doing it this weekend. Again, Tom and I will be casting at 1 o'clock on Saturday and again at 1 and 4 on Sunday. I think we have two matches that day. 
I think we only have one match each day, actually. Um, the first day we're going to be casting Curse versus just your average Joes. Uh, it's going to be at 1 o'clock Eastern Standard Time on Saturday. And then I believe on Sunday at 4 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, we have V8 versus J-Pack and Friends. Oh, that's, you know, we have, we, we casted Curse the first time around, and that was a fun match to watch, watching Sido, uh, uh, Sidco, I was going to say Sudoku, <laughs> <laughs> watching Sidco in the middle play his Mordekaiser versus that Morgana, that was just a sick match to watch, how, it, how well he plays Mordekaiser. Was and, it, it was, was very El well illustrated. Was, was Elements jungling too? <laughs> yeah, Elements was jungle in that game, because they didn't have, uh, Oh, who did they? I didn't have Nijaki because he drew girlfriend aggro the first game. Oh, okay. So uh, they didn't. They were playing with Liquid <laughs> on support, and they put elements in the jungle as Lee Sin. He went this interesting Lee Sin build that literally just got all support items. Isn't it amazing <laughs> when we have so much money up front for this GG Classic, and yet girlfriend aggro can just cut them short? So amazing oh. how that happens. <laughs> we had we had worse forfeits this weekend. I'm not, you know, I don't want to call any of the teams out, but a couple of the teams like went out drinking the night before because it was St. Patrick's Day on Saturday, and they come in and like, hey, can we postpone this? And the rules state that the other team, if it gets postponed, they can either accept it or they can forfeit. And the other teams are just like, yeah, we want to accept the win and you know play next week. Yeah, unfortunately, it was a lot of the smaller teams trying to do it to a lot of the bigger name. Yeah, you, too, you would so think it would be the other way. <laughs> right. I don't know what they're trying to pull. Curse came in. They're just like, oh, my God, we're so hungover. Can we just play? Elvis <laughs> <laughs> uh. was, was like, it's so early. And we're it's like, it's 4 o'clock on the East Coast. It's 1 o'clock on the West Coast. We're like, what do you mean it's early, Elements? He's like, it's early when you're up until 5 drinking. <laughs> <laughs> he said he had the most nasty hangover. Mm -hmm. and it might, that might have been attributed. He just thought he was playing support while he was in the jungle. Yeah, true. <laughs> so watch us over on uh, own.tv forward slash GG Chronicle. We had a great turnout. I think we had almost 800 uh, viewers on the TSM game, TSM game early in the day, and it didn't really go much, drop much further than that the rest of the day. So I hope we have a lot more in the future, and I hope you guys really like our casting that we're doing. And, you know, you might actually see – I think, Hornet, are you going to step in for any of these? You, I mean, I think we were looking for another caster. It, it all depends. I just I just told – you know, I said that I'd be available if uh, if need be. So – uh, if, if it comes down to that, you know, I might be away on Saturday. I know I will be away on Saturday night, so it depends on when the game is, but you know, I might be available. It depends. Um, it's just, you know, it's a flowing situation. So sure. I told Monty, Hey, text me. So we'll <laughs> see. Yeah. If you guys haven't heard of Hornet cast before, he's very analytical. If you haven't noticed that from the podcast, so he makes a great no, co-caster. <laughs> me? What? So I've been, I've been waiting... looking into things? Right. <laughs> I've been waiting for you to, to start the cast again, but I haven't seen it. I have to get you into a battle arena or something. Yeah. You know, I draw girlfriend aggro too, except, you know, mine's wifey aggro instead. <laughs> so That's worse. Yes. Like... It's, 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 it's debilitating at times. I have to say, <laughs> Thankfully, I have. I mean, I have to deal with it. But she's at. Don't get married yet. Don't don't do it. I had someone tell. Oh, my boss is like, "Will you make an honest woman out of her already? You get a tax cut." And I'm like, "I don't. I don't want to spend the money on an engagement ring." <laughs> <laughs> well, that's not the engagement ring only. It'll probably be the wedding and wherever else you decide true, to do. True it. love, there, people. That's what you call true love. <laughs> that's right. Uh, when you hey, been, when you've been together, you say, you know, once you get married, then you know the girls realize they don't need to you know put out anymore. That's kind of how it works. So you got to be careful with that shit. Don't tell, don't tell me that. <laughs> <laughs> so, thank you. Uh, I don't know if you guys have checked out this other website. I had a fan write in, and I went and looked at it. It's, it's called l2playlol.com. That is L, the number two, the word play, and then lol.com. It comes off of um, slash R Summoner School on Reddit. They have this website where you go and sign up, and you can take some tests, and these tests um, help you, you know, get better at League of Legends, as the name says. So, if you guys have checked that out and you really want to learn how to play League of Legends a little bit, go here and sign up for an account. Go take some of those advanced tests. Some of those questions, I mean, they're, they're not easy. And some of, the, some of the Take basic questions. ones is like how many CS should you have at 80 minutes or, you know, well, how do you last hit or whatever. I mean, there's, there's some silly questions in there, but they, they work for summoners from all ages. Uh, you know, I guess ages isn't really the right term. Levels. <laughs> levels. I'm kind of going off Tom. Tom's like, 0 to 30, pro or 2,000 ELO. <laughs> don't, hey, don't you wish it was ages? You never go past 30? I mean, that'd be awesome. Well, I've when, made it that far. Past 30, yes. Offlander, what's it like to be past 30? <laughs> Silence. <laughs> I like to pick on you, buddy. <laughs> Payback will be vicious. 
<laughs> He's brewing. I can tell you the accountant is, is calculating where it's going to come back. You better uh, watch yourself. If you have seen it the way he talks to me during the day, I get called shit at least four times a day. Actually, that, I mean, uh, that is 100% not true. I would, I never would use that word. I call you. Just, I was just about to say it's like it's, it's a derivative of shit. Well, yeah, that might be true. <laughs> <laughs> got to keep the band hammer in check. He's got a bit of an ego, so I have to make sure uh, he never gets. Now to... that I can confirm. The we've been, we've been trying to me- we we're trying to find a way to measure the band hammer, you know, ego and see how big it is, and it's 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 tough, man. I don't know. You you would you and Monty, we got to watch those egos. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> Oh, this cast is fantastic this week. I haven't laughed this hard in a while. So I'm going to play a listener voicemail right now, and then I'll recap it when it's over. This comes in from our buddy, um, buddy Cody, who likes to call in a lot. So I'm going to play it right now. Hey, Trinity Force Podcast. It's Cody again. I got another question for you this week. I want to ask you guys, what is your most hated solo queue person to end up with? Mine, personally, is when you get on the team with that one guy that instantly claims a, claims a lane and says he's playing it no matter what. Can't stand that. How about you guys? What do you think? So, for those of you who didn't catch that, Cody asked, what is your uh, most hated uh, solo queue person to, to queue up with? I was trying to figure out how he said it here as I'm reading text, but he means like the person who walks in and says, uh, supporter, I feed! <laughs> I wish they said that. <laughs> Yeah, my my least favorite is actually somebody on the podcast um, right now, and I hate to do this to the fellow, but it's it's definitely Optimus Tom and his <laughs> and his damn Optimus theme Tom. bands. Enough with the theme bands. <laughs> now the new the new one is it used to be like animals, like he'd ban animals or only purple people or people looking to the right. Um, now yeah. that the new theme band is he he takes the first letter of the champion's name and tries to spell something with it. So like before, oh. But no, I need to do that while having another theme at the same time. Otherwise, it doesn't work. Like, if I spell a really cool word, like art, but there's no theme between the champions, then it's null and void. Yeah, see? So I need, like, all champions that look to the right and spell a word. Ex- exhibit A, right here. <laughs> he just <laughs> admitted why it. it doesn't work. Yeah. Wait. There, there, there's one. I, the one that I absolutely despise is the one who's too high to know exactly what they're doing. And <laughs> they, they proceed to... Um, Get distracted by a uh, girlfriend or dog or who knows what, and um, yeah, they they proceed to just run in and, and feed or forget what they're doing and dive in, thinking they're oh so powerful, even though they've already died three times to their opposing person in lane. Or there's a whole host of them, really. But my my yeah, my least favorite to queue up with is the one that's too high to realize what the hell they're doing. That that one that one really gets to me. These aren't even solo key. These are like targeted. Yeah, I hate. It's getting, wow. It's getting All right. All right. Well, hold on, hold on. I got to make my redemption after being target banned by Mathlander <laughs> over here. <laughs> <laughs> my least favorite person is. Well, you know how normally everyone will come in and like the general consensus, even among pros, is when you get into a solo queue game, it's solo queue. So if someone goes, hey, I'd like to play middle, you're probably better off letting them play middle because they probably suck at playing other roles. So my least favorite person in the world is like when you're right smack dab in the middle, you're like third pick and you're like, hey, I could do this role or this role like me. I'll be I could play top or I could play middle and I'm like the third pick in the entire thing. And the person above me and the person above him pick a middle and a top champion and say, deal with it, fag. Oh, wow. <laughs> oh, I'm... by the way, I, I do have to say that, you know, you're, you often, you know, sometimes you're better off giving it to the person because, you know, that's all they can play. Uh, that's Ranhurt in a nutshell. D- Ranhurt yeah, will be is. the bottom <laughs> and say, mid, please. And yeah. of course, he never gets it. And then it's fail from there. Um, you you can pray that he gets top, but if he gets support, you you're fucked. I, I hate to tell you, but you you just play <laughs> screwed. That's the way it works. That's like getting record to play AD carry. That was the worst idea. I've ever oh had. god. <laughs> and, oh, I, oh, and was he high? I was just curious. Well, he's always high. I mean, I just, oh, okay. do anything with him. Allegedly, but. allegedly. Let's allegedly. I've never heard the bog. Let's not say him. anything that'll hold up in court. You know. <laughs> <laughs> my my uh the person i hate the most is i agree with chat here is the person who doesn't care what is already called they just insta lock whatever the hell they want to play that i hate those 
<laughs> and I hate people that call. Like, what the fuck are you doing calling from, like, the bottom right. saying you're going to play mid? Well, I, like, if I'm the bottom, I just pick up whatever slack is left. Like, if someone right. say, hey, can you play jungler? I'll go, yeah, I can only play these two, but I can play jungler. Right. Like, but at least you have some role. Like, I don't play top very often. I couldn't tell you. I only have, like, two mid champs that I feel comfortable playing. Like, that that's just the way it is. It's kind of how the role goes. So... If you're going to be forced to play something, at least let it known what you're going to be forced to be playing. But if you're the bottom of the barrel and you're demanding mid, no, screw you. It's not your call if somebody above you who is the higher elo right. actually needs to take it. It's it's That just drives me crazy. And it's like, I play mid or feed. I play top or feed. <laughs> top or feed. You know, at least I appreciate that people are like, top please. You know, it's like, at least I said, please, I I could at least buy a little (laughs) bit of your ignorance. But, you know, besides that. Right, right. I saw there was a screenshot I saw one time where someone had said, I can play anything. And I don't know what pro said it back. I'm sure when you guys saw the screenshot, but he said, no, you cannot play anything. Just play what you're best at. Because Hmm. you you can't play every single role, more than likely. I mean, you have one role that you're very good at. Just like I I can play AD carry very, very well. I I cannot play top very well because I don't understand all the matchups and my jungle is not that stellar, but I will play them if needed because I'm sure the other people that are playing or I'm hoping so know how to play better than I do. And all I have to do is not die. Yeah, I can auto attack with Caitlyn, but as far as positioning for team fights, yeah, (laughs) about that. A little harder. That's a little that's a little slacking in my area, just to say. It's a little harder for me when I'm running top and I have teleport because I don't know when to use it. I'm like, guys, I can teleport down there, and no one says anything in the middle of the fight. I'm like, I can, I can teleport, and I teleport, and the fight's over. <laughs> and, uh, and being top, you should pretty much know when you're going to teleport and know what team fights are good to go into and whatnot, or at least that's the impression I'm under. Did he also in a way play Shen? Then you have to learn how to teleport on command. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Oh, that's- Best example of that ever. Oh, the no. previous game we just played, <laughs> I'm being ganked by four people up top because no one wants to stay in the Talon lease in bottom lane. <laughs> I'm getting ganked. All Slander goes, hold on, Tom, I'll ult you in 140 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just I just used it to save our mid. I mean, and also, what were you doing up on top, Tom? Were you, were you single-handedly trying to take their blue? <laughs> No, you know what my favorite thing about that game was was when Oscillator was like, "Hey, I got my uh, I got my ult up," and we're like, "All right, we're gonna dive," and he never comes in to help us. Well, I know there was no point. You guys were I was going to ult in, but you guys like pretty much wiped him out. I wasn't gonna waste my ult to just you know <laughs> basically probably kill steal one of you. I think I actually no, I did kill steal that because I I ran down instead, yeah. <laughs> and they pushed. Who was it? Was it Caitlyn? They pushed her to the the tri brush on bottom on blue side. And then just she just met a vorpal, a vorpal blade right to the face. And <laughs> he walks out and gets the kill. Pretty much uh, just goal. last hitter. That was great. <laughs> you wouldn't want to kill steel. That's that's a new one. Well, you always want to. Kill I steel? never kill steel. I'm 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 right. I'm the best teammate ever. Man, he's the post. And Ranher yeah. doesn't have syndrome either. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love that blitz crank. Uh, that graphic I posted on Twitter this week. If you guys check it out over at forward slash T force, uh, yes. there was one where it says, <laughs> well, I don't remember what it said. It had Blitzcrank walking the tower. Beep boop, fuck the tower. <laughs> Beep yes. boop, fuck the tower. And Karthus is like, you get him, kid. <laughs> the only thing that would have been better is if they actually put the boxing glove skin on him when they did yes. that. Yes. <laughs> that would have made it even better. But yes, I agree with you. It was good. Uh, listener question from Master of Swag. He wants to know your opinions on the two best champs at each role. Now, my suggestion is, is uh, you know, Tom knows top. I know jungle. Auslander knows both. But let's start with AD carry because, uh, you know, at least Pwn, you know that one pretty damn right. well. I'll give you that one. I don't know if I would ever say there's two best at any role. I think I would just say like the two that will see the most play or the two that uh, do the most. Well, I guess, it sure the most fluctuates utility. bottom lane, doesn't it? Yeah, because I'm thinking like Grave Sorak is a fantastic lane, but at the same time you can play Tristana Alistar and suddenly that becomes an amazing lane because mm-hmm. of all their CC. Uh, you can play Vayne Alistar and suddenly that becomes more that becomes more powerful depending on the players than a Grave Soraka. Volibear I mean, Urgot. Volibear Urgot doesn't do anything because <laughs> Volibear only throws minions. <laughs> let me say that. Let me say that Urgot is the flavor of the month or the flavor of this past month. Oh with, yes, uh, is is play and tankiness that uh, that uh, many of the pro teams have put out, and I've seen a lot more of him recently than I have in a long time. So 
That's one that's one to consider as far as flavor of the month, which I should say for all of this, there's flavor of the month. Oh, absolutely. Um, and that's really know, what it comes down to is the, what's the most popular. It's not so much what's the best in each role because roles are so dynamic. It's really what's the most popular to play right. and, and what's the most popular to counterpick with. Right. I agree with you. It's it's absolutely the way it is. But, um, you know, in the jungle, at least the flavor of the month recently uh, that I've seen is definitely Maokai. And not Mayoki. Not Mayoki. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't, don't don't go there. Um, you know Mayoki, and I, you know, I have to say, <laughs> made me do it. Made me do it. Uh-huh. <laughs> Take a lap. <laughs> made me do it. Uh, and the other one I have to say is Lee Sin. Um, Lee Sin is being picked, especially at high levels. Uh, he his utility is just so good for giving you options whether it's getting in and out or, or and reaching out you know from a far distance you know his q is great his w is great his it's just his extra movement makes his utility so good and then he's able to get in and my favorite play is if, if you can get in with lee sin and drag and kick somebody back into your party right um that's that's one of the best places and then you w can back into your party to continue the fight exactly and then you can e them once you're back into the party to slow them down again it's like i love that whole combination of how that plays and greatly sins have great combos because of his passive that restores the restores the energy to him is is it just know how to work it it's like a rhythm with him it really takes a lot of skill to play him well but he is definitely played at a high level and i see him picked in jungle all the time so that's that'd be my suggestions for you know i've seen the month and good in jungle uh who was it uh whose curse is top frick i'm, I'm having drawn a blank right now oh boy boy no, no oh i'm sorry that's, that's yeah no 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 who, who was it this weekend yeah not yes pole belter that's exactly it that's pole, right pole belter was playing lee sin top this last weekend and udir tiger udir and he was destroying face against an olaf with lee sin top he just leveled up the w and got the shield all the time and and olaf couldn't do anything to him and that's just another same thing i've seen resurgence of lee sin in the mm-hmm. top lane absolutely i saw dyrus learning him and, and playing him well and you know going in and, and t- he he's viable top lane in certain matchups i don't know all the matchups that he's viable with because i don't play top that often but he is definitely viable and you can and it also it's a mix in how you want to build him as well whether you level the qwre first is they're, they're all viable to to build first for different reasons so you know it's it's he's definitely an interesting character with a lot of roles that he can play so any any of you uh, Mathlander or Tom for middle or top? Well, let's see here. I, I wanted to actually throw someone in the jungle real quick that I've seen. Not necessarily the best, but I just want to say a lot of people have been playing this, so you want to know how to beat him. Is Doctor Mundo? Like we've seen a lot of Mundo in we've seen a lot of Mundo in the jungle out of people like I will dominate on Dignitas, and we even see CLG playing some jungle Mundo. And to be completely honest. Besides Mundo having this ability to really like come in and gank, and if he fails a gank, just stick around and come back, like uh, wipe out a creep camp very quickly with his uh, his AOE on his W, and then come back for a gank before the middle lane or the top lane, whatever will expect it again. You just have to have heads up play. But if Mundo can't gank, he can't do as well. So I wouldn't put him in like that the best champion role, but I think it's just worth it to mention that you might see a lot of jungle Mundos when you're queuing up. I think it's just the fact that his sustain is so good. It's similar to why Aurelia is so good top and why I would say she's one of the top two for top lane, even though she just got nerfed is, you know, the sustain that both of them have is, is almost borderline ridiculous. When they get to a certain point, it's so hard to kill them unless you're completely focused on them. And then you can't focus on them because when you're in a team fight, you need to go get the carry. And it's just like, well, he's there. He's AOEing everybody. He's, you know, wrecking havoc, really. But then you can't do anything about it either. It's it's kind of crazy the way that works. So, yeah, I agree with you. Dr. Mundo is another flavor of the month that you see. I, d- I didn't like Mundo for the longest time. And I just think it's funny that you see him get played once in the pros and suddenly all the other pros start picking him up and go, oh, why didn't I think of that? Mm-hmm. <laughs> it's the same thing with Ergot. Oh, why did I think about this? I thought Mundo, you know, didn't do anything. So Mundo it, goes where he pleases. Yeah, Mundo stands on the top lane as Misfortune outfarms him in the bottom lane. It's, well, it's like... Mundo outfarms Misfortune in the top lane, then Misfortune baits him in the team fights while she goes <laughs> to the top lane. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get it right. Uh... Mundo, dive! Okay, I'll bet right away. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> I'll get trolled left and right today. Nice. <laughs> yeah, you deserve it. Um, you know, just looking over the champions, one one that makes suggestions for mid is you know the one stable that I keep finding all the time in mid is Morgana, uh, and that seems to apply to all levels. Uh, her it's it's really the fact that that her ultimate plays so well in team fights but that she has uh, you know an easy way to farm with her little pool of aoe and she has a really debilitating ability with 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 her cage so that's that's just one that you always see as far as the middle goes and another one that we've seen that i'm going to call flavor of the month is rise um rise and i i i almost believe that Alex Itch is of um, Moscow Five is is partially the reason for his resurgence recently. Is just the sheer fact that he's his rise was getting banned, mm-hmm. uh, especially in Kiev because he was just destroying people with 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 rise and never being moved out of lane and always pushing lane and never having issues. So just as a suggestion out there. Yeah, I'm gonna have to agree with you. Rise definitely one of the stable picks in the middle. It's it's not even necessarily a flavor of the month. It's just he's always going to be that safe pick in the middle. I think out mm-hmm. of all the discussion I've seen between pros, the only counter, like the real counter they've come up with against Rise is Brand. And that's about it. Because Brand mm-hmm. has the AoE. He sets up with a stun. He can melt down Rise before Rise can harass Brand down. But he's just... He's just such a safe champ. He's easy to just sit back and farm up his Q with. You get a tier of the goddess and a catalyst, you're not going to die to a lot of bursty champions in the middle, and you're not going to have to worry about too much crowd control because you can just turn it back on them, activate your ultimate, uh, spell vamp yourself back up to decent sustain, just walk away and continue farming. So overall, just a very, very safe choice for people. It's one of those champions that all the people who play middle should really have in their arsenal and should have that awkward rise rune page, which is all like magic penetration and mono runes, which you're never going to use on any other champion but rise. But he's also one of those champions that it takes finesse like Alex Ick. He's going to be able to play it in this very aggressive style, whereas, you know, we see Reginald trying to do it his way. It doesn't really work out all the time. Scara likes playing it in his very defensive posture, and it works out for him on occasion, but... He's a very versatile middle champ that everybody should really just at least try, if not know how to play, if you want to play a middle position. Yes, absolutely. You know, I was going to say one more is, um, and then this, this is, I think ever since she came out, and that's Ari. Mm-hmm. Um, there are just there are just ways that Ari can dip in and out, and with a, in the hands of a really skillful player, looks really really good. I, um, Froggen from CLGEU makes makes Ari look look amazing when he can literally no i i watched for instance i watched him play against morgana and he would find ways to bait the the cage uh, i call it the cage i, I forget what the ability is called i'm missing it off the top of my head black shield black no not black shield um dark binding yeah dark binding uh and and, and just bait it and then we'll just just dart her way around it and just absolutely destroy whoever she was against with her ultimate and her ultimate allows for such amazing movements in certain ways that you know you see the different Ari is one of those champions that has a high high skill cap and you can see uh things happen but she can be really really dominant has been a flavor of the month and picked pretty often recently yeah, I was going to say her that she's the only other one that I've seen in the middle played a lot. I've seen some really good zigs lately, too. If you can land all, those, all the skill shots that he has, you can do some you know amazing plays out of it. Was it, uh, it, wasn't, it wasn't Sidco that was playing zigs the other day that I was thinking of? Um, um, uh, it was Nijacky when Nijacky. he came back in. Okay. And he was the one who brought – no, it was Epic Gamer is when it happened because – Oh, it, oh uh, Salsa. Yeah, Salsi. That's it. Because uh, I was trying to think of the game, but uh, he was playing Ziggs, and he helped Clakey get out of the jungle by throwing a satchel charge over the wall and bouncing Lee Sin up over the wall with the satchel charge. And that got him out of a gank. And I just was, you know, floored by lo- watching that. Just, you know, the utility that Ziggs could bring to a team as well. But you have to be very good at landing all your cues, and he's, mm-hmm. you know, very man independent when you're poking. So I think we discussed and debunked that. It was actually the W that got him back out. He can't, oh, was he it? can't actually bounce teammates. We were talking about that. It, it it still was an amazing play with a kill that happened before it, but um, no, Ziggs can't actually bounce teammates. He can only bounce himself and ah, okay. oppose opponents. So we, we we were debunking that. But um, let me just say that middle has the most variety because there because of AP champions. 
um, because another champion that you're seeing banned a lot, especially in high level play, is Cassiopeia. And that's because her her abilities just change, you know, when she's allowed to pull several, you know, opponents in one place and then actually freeze them with her ultimate. She's just de- damaging, just just destruction type of champion. And M5 likes to ban her every chance they get. So, I mean, that's that's another champion to consider. I really think top is, just, I mean, if not more, just as versatile as middle because you see, there's so many different matchups you have to learn and so many different rune pages you have to build. Because uh, I was looking at like my Yorick build the other day, and I've got three different rune pages for him. I've got one that's got armor. I've got one that's got armor and magic resist, and I've got one that's got you know just magic resist. And I could ha- you know I could have one as well that's got armor and um, armor and mana regen. I mean, there's just so many different ways I could build Yorick, just for example, in the top lane. And that's for how many different matchups I'm going to play against. Yeah, because I guess the one variety you do get is that you can get AP or AD at top you know you can you can you know you run it and by the way as, as somebody as a suggestion for somebody i see a lot top um you used to see gangplank all the time he's starting to die down a little bit in use but i see riven all the time top mm-hmm. i think riven has been one of those champions that uh, um she can change fights because she is so durable um her health and armor is are are really really debilitating in, in fights where you just can't get rid of her and then her movement to get in and out, whether it's her dash or her, uh, you know, three part movement is, is, is really nice to have in, in different ways. So I think there's a little bit of like a differential champions. You need to know if you're going to play top lane. And we saw this, if you watch uh solo mid streams and they picked up dire stuff, Epic gamer, they were doing scrims and drilling him and saying like, okay, well you need to know this champion. You need to learn that champion. And it really breaks down to like three or four separate roles. You need to have, the AD top lane bruiser. You need to have a ribbon. You need to have, you know, someone that could just run in there and just really deal a lot of damage. You also mm-hmm. need to have in your arsenal the tanky top champion. Like in Dyrus's case, he could play Singed. So he has the tanky top champion in his arsenal. Then you need the the sustainy and late game damager, like an Aurelia. You need to have that champion in your arsenal, otherwise you're not going to be able to combat what people are throwing at you up top. And the last one, which you've seen come into prominence a little more recently, is you need an ability power champion up top like a Vladimir or a Mordekaiser or someone to contribute to a double Will of the Ancients build. Mm-hmm. We've just seen so much out of the top lane right now, and we've seen so many people uh, picking up Vladimir. Like, Vladimir is probably the mainstay because he's the combination of that sustainy champion that could dish out damage and the ability power champion that he could really bring into a fight with double Will of the Ancients. Plus, his pass is ridiculous. The fact that ability power adds health and health adds ability power. Right. So he, he just becomes like this, literally like this spiraling force where if you get a melee champion against Vladimir, like the lane is basically Vladimir's. Unless it's maybe an Aurelia or someone that could sustain against him, the lane is basically belonging to Vladimir. And then if you have, you know, an ability power champion against an ability power champion, Vladimir has the, the double combo that he could be played middle. So you could even swap up that, or you could just have him play strictly against the other ability power champion in the top lane and still be perfectly fine. So definitely. Mean, Vla- hmm? I was going to say he has the good out of jail free card, which is his pool. I mean, that gets him out of so many sticky <laughs> situations. It's ridiculous. Yeah, he's very difficult to gank, especially from top, because you're going to have wards in the river, and even if you don't, it's just it takes the jungler so long to get up there. When you pull out of the way and the jungler fails the gank, he takes forever to get back to his jungle or go down to another lane. It's just it's really, really frustrating for a jungler to go up against the Vladimir up top and not pick up a kill from the gank or like barely have him get away and devote all that time up there. Because you're gonna be chasing Vladimir, going down through his pool, he's gonna be healing himself back up, plus like the the sixteen seconds it takes to go from like middle lane to top lane so once you have Vladimir it's kind of a nuisance for the jungler because either have to camp that and lose out on farm or you know like they have to go up there and fail ganks and it takes them forever to go anywhere else yeah you don't see a lot of I haven't seen a lot of Vladimir's running flash anymore uh, healing mm-hmm. night is healing no night. stable yep yep because they pull the, the pull is basically their flash right because they slow whoever they're next to and they start to get out I mean it's it's kind of you know pretty amazing how that runs um i'm gonna go jump to support real quick and i'm gonna say the flavor of the month now with sona being nerfed is janna uh i'm seeing oh, janna so pick much. a lot more and I, I i really agree with it she has so much utility the reason you used to not pick her was because her early game was slow 
and now uh, she can she can survive long enough, depending you know who she's matched up with. But you know, even with a Kogma, where she plays protect the Kogma, it's it's her her she has a great utility on every one of her spells, which is you know kind of hard to find sometimes on every every champion. And the other one I'll say that I'm seeing, you know, you starting to really see consistently a lot more is Nunu. And I think that's mostly because of Blood Boil, uh, oh, absolutely. along with some other things. But Blood Boil just makes such a difference in the power it gives your AD carry uh, as it works. So those are, those would be my two. I'd say Soraka has also played, you know, a decent amount. But I like the resurgence of Leona, too. I've seen her played a little bit. I mean, not as yeah. much as any of the others, but we've seen a lot of Leona play lately. And her passive is just amazing for any kind of like kills that you want to set up. It doesn't have to be like a traditional kill lane um, of a, like a J4 Leona. You can do a Tristan and Leona. And I seen that. I've saw, I saw a curse make that work against Kog'Maw Nunu the other day. Mm-hmm. You, yep. I like I like Leona going on the bottom with Corky because you have the double whammy, the sunlight, extra damage, and then the true damage. Mm-hmm. It's oh, just yep. so annoying to deal with. But I think I'm going to call it right now. Um, within the next couple of weeks, you're going to see significantly less Janna and significantly more Sona. I'm calling it right now. Even after the the nerfs that we've seen on her? Because didn't Sona not win a single match out of IEM? I don't believe she did. However, because of that, she got a buff to her poke damage. Uh, okay. I didn't see the Sona nerfs. I, I, nerfs. Um, we were going to talk a little bit about the patch notes. I guess we can kind of walk in that a little bit here. Well, I, let, me, let me say this, though. And I don't think that's going to happen. And the reason being is because the reason you take Sona is because you could help your AD carry snowball early. You can get an early lead with CS because she'll sit there and she'll poke away, zone out, and you'll be on your way. She still isn't able to do that yet. Her early game poke was nerfed so much that I, it's, it's just not, you know, she doesn't have the utility that works later on. Uh, you know, she slightly affects fights with her three normal abilities. Her ultimate obviously affects a fight big time, but her three normal abilities only minor, you know, minorly affect a fight. You know, you can speed up or slow somebody down. Once you're in the middle of the fight, it usually doesn't help that much because you're either in or you're out or you're not a part of it. I, I, I don't, I'm not going to see it. I, I, I'm think, I'm saying Lulu from already what I've seen is going to be, a prominent member of the support team. Oh, uh, I think so. I think it will well play Lulu. I actually if you, watched, watched my support play him this today, and the what she brings to the team is fantastic with a slow, a hex, and a shield that knocks back and gives your allies life. I mean, just absolutely. those three abilities. It's, it's huge on a, on a carry. Now, Auslander, we don't want to let him talk about it because he'll just talk about how slow she is the entire time. Yeah, I mean, I played her <laughs> once, really, and I, didn't, I wasn't a, a big fan early on, but... Uh... Like, uh, you know, maybe my build is wrong or maybe I was just thinking about her the wrong way. But I, I didn't I didn't really think she was all that good. Thinking about her the wrong way? Yeah, well, if you what? know what I mean. Yeah. Yeah. Really? What are we, yeah, so, yeah, what, you know, what are we 14? Jesus Christ. <laughs> so you like Pixies now? Did I, did I, did I miss that? Yeah. No, you, uh, could tell, you could say Lulu gives Auslander a giant girth. <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, I was going to make another joke, but I'm going to try to Peter stay. Pan. <laughs> What the hell? Last week it's commie life. Now it's Auslander likes little girls. I don't even want to know. Yeah, what's going on I, next I, week. I'm just wondering. He wasn't digging it, but now he is. I mean, I, I just I don't know. Suddenly so we hear we hear Auslander is disconnected from the call. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna edit this entire section out when I uh, upload the file. So you know, one of her skins does have a tan. I will say that this never happened. <laughs> 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 good thing I have the good thing I have the VOD. <laughs> yeah. So I really like playing Lulu or I like seeing Lulu so far from the couple of games that I've played with her. I think you have to be really aggressive though. I think she kinda has to be like a Sona. I wouldn't say two point but she kinda has to be like that that pre nerf Sona where you have to be aggressive with your slows and your doing the damage and the shields and all the good stuff because I mean she has different utilities on, you know, what is it? Help uh, help Pixie, is that what it's called? Or help picks? Help where, pick where she can either shield you and give you a ton of speed. And by the way, misfortune with boots and that shield on and, and strut, I had like 570 move speed or something with a Phantom Dancer. It was insane. Yeah. Yep. I was Definitely sprinting across for... the field. I, I, yeah, I, I, I got, to, I had to play against her in a, in a, actually in our rank game today. Uh, someone pulled her right out. And let me just say that the one thing that wild growth does is, especially when a gank is coming, 
it's like an automatic save. It's better than heal. Oh yeah. And it's better than, you know, a lot of other things. You just the the, the sheer fact that you just make them bigger, uh, you know, knocking enemies up from who they're around them, which gives them like a, a, a automatic movement for like another second to get away. And that just gives them large amount of health. It's 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 almost like a save for anybody in, in yeah, trouble. It's like, it's like a good quarter of your health, too, that it brings back. Right. And it's a good chunk of health, because I think I almost died two times, but Lulu saved me with her knockback slash giant growth. Yeah, there you go. I mean, it, I, I saw it a bunch of times, and it was actually a Lulu, uh, a Lulu misfortune combo, and I came down as jungle to come down and gank, and it looked like, oh, yeah, we got her, you know, we got her exhausted. She's down. Then Wild Growth comes out, pops everybody out. She gets out of exhaust and is already running back to the tower before we can even get there. I mean, it, it happened It happened three different times. But also the Wild Growth on an initiate tank is sick. Like, if you can, you can throw, like, a Malachi out there. Malachi can go target whoever they want. Then you throw Wild Growth on him as he gets there or when he gets there. That just pops up. You know, whoever they target, if it happens to be in the middle of the fight, it's everybody. It's 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 really really sick. I, I think she's her utility in the right hands is going to be nasty. Yeah, and you know what's really interesting and what I like about her is that her Q can hit multiple targets, and it's going to get really odd. It's going to be odd trying to figure out how to make your uh, Q because it's it's two skill shots, it's not one. Right. And it comes from both like both sides of her. And right. I, I I don't I don't think I could smart cast that. I, I don't know either. That was kind of interesting to see when when uh, it's shown on the uh, on the summoner showcase. But I agree with you. I'm not sure if I could smart cast that either. If it's one of those where you uh, you know I haven't played her yet. Is it all center? Is it one of those where like you click twice or you just click no, once? No, you, and... you click once, but um, um, it's depending on where your mouse is. That's like it changes the angle it's cast at. So um if you if your mouse is all the way at the end of your skill range it attacks like as a point like that's the that's the target and if you have your mouse closer to you it kind of the crosshairs sort of uh spread apart so it'll it'll, it'll attack in like an x so. you know i bet you can smart cast it it's just a matter of you got to get a you're gonna have to play with it to get a feel for how close you need to be for your mouse to close right. to lulu itself and actually to split the crosshairs that go across it'll it'll be interesting to watch but i bet you can well, yeah. The also, the thing is too. If oh, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. But the thing is too, if you're going to be using it after you've cast help picks, the second thing actually fires from wherever the person you've cast picks is on, allied or enemy. Right. Yeah. It's it's like you're casting from picks and then you're casting from Lulu. So, in oh yeah. So yeah. In, in theory, you could probably do some crazy skill shots by you know putting. So if you if you use help picks on an ally, does and you use your Q, does it shoot from the ally's position? Then? Yeah. Yep. At your target. Nice. Nice. So yeah, I'm sure there's you know people more skilled than I will come up with sick and crazy ways to use that. But <laughs> well, I did. They do say like, uh, her, what's is it her passive? Yes, her passive is the fix. Is, I'm sorry, picks the fairy champion, um, or companion. Sorry. That she shoots the homing boats, uh, bolts, but you can like shoot a creep in front of you, and picks will keep going and shoot the creep behind it. Like if you kill the creep in front of you, so like mm -hmm. if you're trying to last hit with her, you can actually last hit more than one minion with it. But you have to be like amazing shot. Like all these seem like this. It's like a high skill champ, high skill cap champion. I can't talk right now. Been trying. It's to... good though. It's good though because I I feel like it'll it'll give. You know, I feel like Janine is, is a high skill support champ to know where and when to do certain things. And I think Lulu is going to be the exact same thing where I think it's going to give a lot of playability because I think she's got a lot of neat tricks to go along with the, being a, a, a neat support champion. I, I, I actually am considering buying her because really? I, I, she, she plays such an interesting role to me that I am really interested in trying. I wish you could, I wish I could sell you mine. <laughs> <I'll be perfect. laughs> Make it happen, right? I'm glad you like her. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm a big fan. <laughs> I, wasn't it earlier today that you said I'm never giving this uh, this game any more money? Today? No, I didn't say that. Not you. No, uh -oh. No. oh, oh, yes, that's me. That is me. I still have a thousand RP left. That's Ooh, why I was big sorry. spender. <laughs> yeah, big spender. Sure. I'm actually the lowest be part be of scared. RP in in. in RP and IP I've ever had. I have 723 IP right now. Normally I'm sitting at like 8K. So I don't know what to do with myself. Talk to your sponsor. What the heck? 
Hey, Auslander, yeah. Mathlander, buddy. Mathlander. <laughs> uh, I need. Uh, I need. Uh, You're getting a, 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 a barely used 3DS. That's that's as good as I can do. <laughs> that's that's your sponsor support. Maybe you should stop giving away ten dollar RP cards. Use yeah, use it for yourself, you maniac. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just trying to get more people to li- follow me on Twitter, so I can have more people to spam Buy. because the people on my main Twitter don't like what? to listen to <laughs> Buying friends, just like you did in high school and middle school and. And right now, to get you guys on the podcast, <laughs> hey guys, come on the podcast. We'll, we'll make like tons of money. And everyone's like, wait, where's my check? Crickets. Where's my 20, 21 episodes in. Have a new check. Yeah, I'm actually negative money. So that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so am I technically. But True. Yeah, investing in all these champions, man. D- where's diving, our sponsor? Diving real quick. So normally we do support Ranhurt as a segment. And I have to say, this segment has like. Ranherd's random segment that I never thought would go anywhere has like taken off and blown out of the water. I've got, I, I have two emails here and I have two text messages. I have three emails and two text messages and he's everybody. And, yeah. And he's not here. And I have two more that um, two more comments that were on the post last week that I posted on GG Chronicle. So overall I have a ton of feedback in the support Ranherd section or rather Ranherd does. And of course he's not here when I want to do it. So instead I kind of want to talk about support Optimus Tom. <laughs> this is <laughs> difficult. <laughs> Does that mean I get to pick champions? I'm playing in the bot lane, and they have to choose who they're going to support me with. You, yes, exactly. You get to ask Hornet and oh, ask yes. who to support you with. All uh, right, we, now are we going to uh-huh. are we going to review the the answers for last week? Yeah, uh, go ahead, take it. No, do we want to do it now, or do you want to do it when he gets back? Oh, no, you... ran her gets back. Yeah, save it. Okay. If that's the case, all right, this one's for you, Hornet, because I know you love this champion so much. All right, so I'm feeling frisky in the bottom lane, and I feel like getting some, getting a lot of kills without really farming up any minions to carry us in the late game. I choose Evelyn. Who are you guys going to support me with? <laughs> I knew that was coming. How did I know? Uh, I'm going How Twitch. I, I, don't, I don't even have to think about it. We're going Twitch. It's going to be... <laughs> Yes! Uh, I'm, I'm going Twitch. First thing I'm doing too is I am, you know, maybe I, I since I'm going support, I'll, I'll probably my first purchase normally would be a Philo Stone, but instead with Twitch, I'm I'm going Oracles right off the bat, and we are just gonna have the world's most annoying lane in the history of mankind. It's just going to be awful. Wait, you're gonna have Oracles? I'm gonna have Oracles because they're definitely gonna pink ward because both of us are oh, just going invisible. Okay. So I'm just gonna Oracles. We're gonna we're gonna sweep wards and. They're not gonna know what's going on. We're gonna, maybe we're mid. You never know. Maybe we're top. Maybe we're yeah. maybe we're behind you. Where'd the bottom lane go? <laughs> yeah. I don't know. Hey, maybe we're in the jungle while you're trying to take red buff. It's just gonna be, it's gonna be a nightmare. Basically, none of them are gonna be able to sleep at the end of the night. And uh, Tom and I will will just will dominate. It's game over already. GG. GG. All right. <laughs> since you don't since you don't want to take any CS. I am going to actually pick the champion that in case you decide you're going to go roam someplace else and not stick with your lane, that can actually sustain the lane and be a tower if need be when you abandon me. <laughs> so I am going to pick Cho'Gath. Now, the other part to that is <laughs> with Cho'Gath, if you time a knockup, that's the perfect time for Evelyn to come out and attack, and then Cho'Gath can finish off with a munch. And I feel like... Shogath can sustain against a, a AD carry and support on a lane if need be, but also when you actually decide to come back and visit, you'll come back and visit and then we'll set it up and actually, you know, perform a successful gank. Whereas I'm not sure, Evelyn, if you're not going to do any, you know, any worry about any CS, well, I'll t- just take it all and I'll get beefy and then I won't worry about it. So I, I'm going to get a champion that I know I can sustain with when you leave and get bored and go do something else. <laughs> wow, that, that was now I know how Ranhurt felt when I talked about Nunu. <laughs> that was. <laughs> Dang, like I, I was all out answer. I was I was all set to jump on the Twitch band mic, but I think I'll have to get that one to Hornet. Wow, that is really good. <laughs> he, basically, he basically said he was gonna take all your CS and kill steal you, and he's the support. GG Well well, do we wanna win the game? Because uh, then that's normally what you wanna do to me. Wow. We've learned that from misfortune. Wow. What, steal all your CS and don't let you get an Ionic Spark? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Alright, so I could do another one of these, don't I? You got one more for tonight. All right, so for tonight, 
let's say I'm feeling a little old school and maybe I haven't really updated my League of legends kind of ways. I'm thinking that, all right, maybe, you know, after the Evelyn kill lane and Twitch and I and Cho'Goth and whoever else is in the game just completely dominated, let's give the team a regular chance. And I'm going to be picking Caitlyn in the bottom lane. Who are you going to support me with? Uh, do I have to go first this time? Well, I'll, I'll go things. first. I'll go first if oh. you don't want to. <laughs> Um, after that last uh, time and Tom didn't pick me to win, uh, I'm, there's no way in hell I'm supporting you, Tom. So I'm going to go Blitzcrank. I'm just going to roam. You're on your own. Good luck. Let me know, <laughs> let me know how that goes. I'll be... He's going to blow all his mana at level one on hooks that he purposely misses. No, no, no. no. I'll be mid. I'll be helping Ranherd out. Or uh, or maybe I'll, be, maybe I'll be top helping out DC Wasabi. Or maybe I'll be helping out the jungler. I'll have a, just a, a little helper in the jungler. But I will not be bottom helping this ungrateful bastard. <laughs> I'm going to bring out a history because, you know, knowing Tom, he's not happy if he just sits there and CSs all day. It's It has to be some action going on. There has to be something. So I'm going to go a little out and I'm going to say Saporic, oh, who we've started to see more and more now, is actually going to make sense because we're going to sit there and I'm going to poke the other lane out the way. We're just going to zone out. We're going to push the lane. We're going to take the tower quick, and we're going to start roaming ourselves. Because Yorick's poke plus Caitlyn's range and auto attack speed are just going to make it really sick for somebody to, to actually try and get close to, to doing any kind of farming, especially an Urgot whose range is really, really low, or say a Vayne whose, whose range is also low. I can sit there and I can just poke and poke and poke and we can push the lane away and then go roam and do whatever we want. Ooh, you know, the I'm sorry, the image that popped into my head when we're talking about this is we get into game and I pick Caitlyn and Hornet's going to be playing Yorick up top and Auslander's supposed to support me as Blitzcrank, but Auslander's going to be the guy that we all talk to that we hate and be like, nope, go in top. No. <laughs> <laughs> Picks up Delta first, he gets there faster. I'm first one there. Nope, I'm up top, overdrive yeah, first, got I'll, it. I'll teleport up there. Like, nope, yeah. mine, get you there. <laughs> <laughs> like I just picture that and then like me and Hornet are gonna be on the bottom. We're just gonna roam up top to Blitzcrank and out farm his lane like Misfortune did to me. I'm sorry, Auslander, you had some really good ideas, but after you turned my your back on me, buddy, I'm gonna have to go and support you. Support you can't support even say it. You're picking you're picking oh, chaps you can't even say. No. This is a farce. <laughs> <laughs> oh, very nice. Well, thank you. <laughs> oh, I'm glad we had someone here that could actually do the support rat hurt segment because uh, th this is real. This is great. So if you guys have any questions and or I'm sorry, any answers to support rat hurt or support Optimus Tom this week and what you support him with, what were the two you picked, Tom? I picked Evelyn and I picked Caitlin. All right, let us know in an email. We will read them off here. Uh, probably the next time Tom comes on. I don't know when that'll be, but uh, no, probably I... probably never after that debacle. <laughs> 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 but we'll read those off next time. We might even read them off next week so Tom can listen to it live. And uh, for those of you who, who wrote in about support Ranhurt, we'll, uh, we'll be reading yours next week. Next week. God damn it, I can't talk tonight. <laughs> we'll be reading those next week when he comes on to the show. Auslander's just mad I do better math than him. Ooh. Yeah. So that's 100% that's, that's not true. I was going to say, I'm not buying that <laughs> one. I am not you mad, and B, there's no math. way in hell you I'm do better math that. than uh, than Mathlander. Have you seen, you should have seen Mathlander today. I hope not with my 401k. Yeah. <laughs> well, where's my help for that? Jesus. Well, I wasn't picking out investments. I was just, Banhammer was about to make a, uh, a hasty decision because he didn't run the numbers. And if there's, <laughs> if there's one thing we all know, it's he should always run the numbers. Oh, but don't yes. tell me the odds. Don't tell me the odds. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, Auslander, why don't you tell them where they can follow us to win that $10 RP card? Okay, yeah, you can uh, follow us on Twitter. Um, it's at T-Force Podcast, and I guess 8 o'clock next Tuesday, the um, 327, we'll pick a winner, and I guess we'll announce it live on the podcast. And uh, Got it. So, very exciting. And if you want to uh, give us a phone call, it's 203-494-203-493-6723. You can text us that number as well. Um, basically tell this week. Last week it was that Volibear is better than Janna. This week it's that 
Um, Eve and Blitzcrank are way better than whatever the hell Hornet picked. I don't even care. Um, <laughs> <laughs> and that um, I'm just being trolled by people I thought were friends. I'm actually moving Tom right now as we speak out of my friends list into my people I don't really care about anymore. <laughs> list. So. Oh no, he's only gonna have two people in his friends list now. Yeah. Well. That's maybe maybe more true than it should be, but uh, <laughs> and I'm one of them. I'm so excited. Yeah. Anyway, right. and then if you want to email us, it's feedback at trinityforcepodcast.com, and uh, that is our show this week. Fantastic, guys! I hope you guys enjoyed this show. Hope you enjoyed watching it live. I am switching over to our awesome bumper video now. If you're watching, it's going very 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 quickly. <laughs> so you guys can catch us next week here live over at own.tv forward slash T-Force or on GG Chronicle. So we will see you later. <laughs>